Hi, I'm Ali. Today we're going to walk through the ins and outs of Pasture.io and our remote pasture measuring service using satellites. My background is in dairy farming, uh, where Pasture.io was originally founded on my family dairy farm. Uh, I founded this program through a necessity for feeding cows and managing pasture. Now, no program that I can find does this the same way that Pasture.io allows you to do it. So in other words, matching nutritional feed requirements with animal nutrition requirements and then combining the two. So we get the best of both worlds. We get good animal performance and good pasture performance. How does Pasture.io work? So we like to talk of it in three pieces of information. So we have satellites, we have weather, and we also have paddock activities. So to look at each of those, we have satellites, which provide us with different color bands, say red, green, blue, near infrared, among many other different optics and, and sensors. And then we have local weather data, such as how much rain you've had, uh, min, max temperature, evapotranspiration and, and precipitation and those sort of things. In paddock activities, we have fertilizer events, so what was applied, what was put on, and those sort of things. And then one of the keys to, or key aspects to remote pasture measuring using satellites is grazing events. So we enter in grazing activity, so when your herd grazed a paddock and, and so on. These three pieces of information, the satellites, the weather, and the paddock activities, all feed into a machine learning environment which then produces your pasture covers and pasture growth rates. So pasture covers are kilograms of dry matter per hectare for each individual paddock, and each individual paddock gets a growth rate, and that is in kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day. Another model we produce is the leaf emergence rate. So the leaf emergence rate relies on the weather data, not so much imagery or paddock activities. So that's a, that's a separate model. And then we have the cloudy days model, which is a model that helps us get over any cloudy periods when satellite images might slip in, in the frequency due to not being able to see through clouds. Now, that cloudy days model delivers an up-to-date growth rate, leaf emergence, and pasture cover for each paddock. So in effect, it smooths out the growth rate using most the most frequent or most recent weather, which is more accurate than using the growth rate measured from last week and forecasting out forwards. So within the pasture.io platform, we have a forecast which provides the trend over from the last three weeks to the next couple of weeks. And we also have a near-term movement in growth rate, pasture cover, and leaf emergence. The accuracy of the readings are really good. So if a rising plate meter has a variance of about 150 kilograms of dry matter per hectare, every time you walk into a paddock, the same paddock, the same time, and measure that paddock, there's a variance of you know, around 150 kilos. Our satellite pasture measuring has about a variance of around 50 to 60 kilos. So it's better than a rising plate meter when all the information such as grazings, vert and, and other information, paddock activities are supplied along with the weather and the satellite imagery. The accuracy for measuring different crops. So this is a question that we do get understandably a lot. Now the models are predominantly tra trained on ryegrass clover swords. We have had success with millet and oats when they are grown as forage crops, not, not as cereal crops. We have had some success with kaikuyu. When kaikuyu is grazed aggressively to keep the quality in the kaikuyu, that is when we get the best results from the kaikuyu. So the good thing about kaikuyu is that it's often overdrilled with, say, a ryegrass, which works really well for our models. So you can get really good results from a Kaikuyu ryegrass stand. The main thing is that 
the results are consistent to allow you to make really good grazing decisions week after week. Now, when it comes to things like lucerne or say a just a monocrop of chicory or something like that that doesn't contain say ryegrass through it, then we start to call this experimental because those plants grow different to typical grasses such as um, a, rye, a rye grass or a fescue or a, a kaikuyu even. The post-grazing residuals are measured using targets. So we, we target a post-grazing residual. On your farm, it might be 1,500 or it, it might even be 1,700 kilos of dry matter per hectare is your target. Based on the image that is provided by the, the satellite service, then the model will make up its own mind whether or not you got close to that target or if you overshot it or undershot it. So the model will settle down over time with the more information that you provide to it. And, and that's the magic about it. So we find that farmers get the most significant improvement in satellite pasture measurements after their first grazing round and after entering in some fertilizer records. We then find that over the next 11 months or whatever it is to after your first grazing round, that the model incrementally increases in accuracy. So we often have customers that turn around at the end of the 12 months and go, wow, I didn't notice the improvements in the model uh, since the most significant improvement after entering the grazing round. But now looking back, I can see that it has continued to improve. So that is the thing with the machine learning is that when you keep providing it the information, it gets stronger and stronger, but not just for your farm, but for each individual paddock. So each individual paddock breaks off into its own model and starts, and starts performing in its own right. So, you know, you might have a paddock that sits on a hill over there. You might have a drier paddock over there that doesn't get as much moisture or it's half shaded. So the model starts to adapt for each paddock on your farm. This program was originally built so we could feed animals while managing pasture. So it, it does very much record how much pasture has been consumed per paddock uh, at the cow level as well. We store all of this in the back end so then we can bring it out into reports. And this is something that is being built into V2. In V1, this is available under the paddocks report and it means that we can assess each paddock, not just based on its growth rate times by the amount of days, but by the amount of pasture utilized by the herd that you've been grazing across your farm. Variable rate application and variable rate analysis is something that we're working on. It's not quite there yet. We have built some prototypes around VRA. We can do VRA down to the one meter pixel, uh, but they are generally about 120 megabyte files per hectare. So we like to provide VRA mapping at about the three meter pixel to just shrink the amount of data. So we have built V2 around it being used on your phone or a tablet or even a computer. Uh, it can be used on any, any of those devices anywhere just with your login details. Uh, the key is that you know, you open up the map, you see the grazing to-do list and you just punch in what paddocks you've grazed with all of your herds and that way you keep the pasture measurements humming along really well. So we tap into many indices. Uh, some of those indices we display within the app such as NDVI, SAVI, ENDVI and EVI. So those indices are just four of uh, many tens of indices, so about 80 or more indices we use. Those indices are the most easy to assess with the eye. The other indices are a bit difficult to see what the change is with the eye. So that's why we display those indices for our customers to, to view and look at and to analyze. Uh, the difference with what we do is we don't rely on NDVI for pasture measurements. That's only one little tiny data piece of data information that we calculate that we then feed into the models. NDVI is, it is a good piece of, it is a 
wonderful indices for calculating greenness. But as the satellites or as the pasture cover in a paddock grows over 2,500 kilos of dry matter per hectare, there's only so much greenness that can be measured as as the plant grows above 2,500, the paddock reaches saturation in green. And that is why we use things like weather and paddock activities to grow the confidence level out to say 3,500 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Satellite imagery alone taps out at 2,500 with that saturation, as I just said, and the narrow band that is calibrated for this sort of pasture management taps out around 2,000. So without the extra information, you tend to end up with a flat feed wedge. And then when you add in the paddock activities, it sharpens up on the high end and on the low end, it drops down to the post-grazing residuals. And that's how we get a nice sharp feed wedge. So we have farmer testimonials on our website and we're currently in the process of refreshing those farmer testimonials and bringing uh, more testimonials to the forefront. We get a lot of feedback. We are um, constantly asking for the feedback from our customers so we can keep, well, we can make sure that we're supplying or developing in the right area that you want us to be. So our customers have a loud voice in product development and we're always listening, we're always requesting feedback and, and we're always evolving our product just so we can make sure that we are supplying a valuable product for you. With, when it comes to backup and service queries, we operate almost a 24 hour uh, live chat line and that goes for the email line too for our customers. Uh, we have a dedicated account manager who looks after our customers as well. So if, if this is seven days a week as well, uh, there, there may be a downtime of around four to six hours on the live chat line that we're not about. But generally we can get onto issues within, uh, within six hours, we can answer a question and make sure that everything is running normally. What we do with this service is we understand that it's an education process. It is new technology. It's a new way of looking at how to do things. And our main goal is to make sure that our customers are comfortable in understanding what the product is, how it works, and how they can get the best results from the product. So, so we spend a lot of time educating and running training sessions for customers across the globe. So we've got customers in, well, South Africa, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and through Latin America, such as Chile, Ecuador, Uruguay, and so on. So we've got quite a broad reach of different time zones and we manage all of those time zones and provide training to everyone that needs it. And that includes anyone. So if you're a customer of ours and you get a training to as an onboarding session because you've just signed up and you still want more training in within a week's time, then we will provide that more training. If you bring on more staff in a month or three months time and you want more training, we'll provide that training and help work through what you want to achieve. So then you can be comfortable. We understand that you know a new platform can be quite daunting and, uh, and hard to get your head around and, and know what to look for and what to do to get the best out of things. So that is a lot of our service is about customer success and supplying a dedicated account manager who can facilitate that training and organization between, between yourself and our company. As I just mentioned, we're geographically dispersed across the world. Uh, we, have a, we have a great bunch of pioneering farmers who really just want to get the best they can in, in terms of satellite pasture measuring. So the costs to get involved, well, we've got, we've got plans on the plans page at pasture.io slash plans. Okay, so here is a, one of our dairy farms in Tasmania, in Australia, and they're called Clove, Clove Valley. Uh, they have given us permission to use their accounts for um, showing how the platform works and things like that. So if we were to look through this farm, we can see that they have different colors on their map. So this is the green for pasture.io. We can see the just 
is just a normal green for all the paddocks. Uh, we can see light green, which are the paddocks that have been grazed for this date. So if I open up the uh, the grazing to-do list and hover over these paddocks that have been, or these grazing slots that have been filled in, we can see that they're light green on the map. The orange paddocks are the paddocks that have been fertilized on this day. And these pink paddocks have a spray with holding. So if we go back in time, we can see that there's no fertilizer entry yesterday and we can keep going back in time. And we can see the different paddock activities that have been recorded. So there's, there's lots of fertilization records, grazing records. If I keep scrolling back, there's some blue records. Now blue records are planting records. So those paddocks have been planted with something. So we can see that there's paddock here with a spray withholding. So if I keep scrolling back in time, we can actually see on this date that same paddock had a planting. So we can see a, a spraying on this day. This paddock's under spray withholding. So, so is this paddock, they've had plantings, fertilizations, grazing. So there's a lot going on on this farm. And this just gives a really good visual representation of what is happening. We can view all of these in a calendar as well. So we can pull up a calendar and then go back in time and, and see all the different activities. And then if we click on one of these activities, it actually opens up the record. So we can see that what they planted in this paddock on that day and the, the rate and things like that. Now, I love demoing my family dairy farm. It's where I grew up. Uh, it's it's uh, close to my heart and it's where pasture.io first originated. Uh, so who would have known that it would be a, a company that supplies remote pasture measuring using satellites and machine learning to uh, the world um, across multiple countries and, and uh, multiple continents. So it's quite humbling to be able to demo the family farm that this originated on. So to give you some perspective of where this farm is, if I scroll out, we can see that it is right there in the tip or northwest coast of Tasmania. So if I scroll back in, we can actually make this map colorful to give it a bit more zazz. And then if we scroll in, we can see this beautiful farm, challenging, but lots of character. Uh, we can also change the map background so it's blank. Or we, I like to show it grayscale because it makes the map pop. And then we can see things like the different pasture cover, the different growth rate on each paddock, um, fertilization rec records and so on. And then we can see things like um, NDVI, EVI, ENDVI and SAVI. So you can see that they're all quite different and they all give you a different level of analyzing the satellite images themselves. So if we come across here to the readings page, we can get an idea of how often this farm gets pasture measurements. So if we look here, we've got the third of the fifth. So I'll just zoom in here. So we've got third of the fifth, 28th, 27th, 26th, 25th. So there's a few consecutive days, 22nd, 17th, 16th, 12th, 11th, 10th, 9th, 7th, 6th, 5, 4, 3, 1. So this farm, has had a good run, 27th to 20th, there's, there's seven days apart there. And then 20th to 16th, 15th, 14th, 10th, 7th. So this farm has had, I would say, an unusually good run, 24th, 23rd, 22nd, 21st, 20th, uh, 14th, 13th. Usually it we find it's through summer when it's drier that the clouds hang around more and we don't get as many satellite images. But as you can see, this farm sits in a predominant, predominantly winter rainfall, but rainfall is spread throughout autumn, winter and spring. And then occasionally we get summer rains enough, to, enough for flooding. 
So it's around a thousand millimeter mark per annum of rain. Uh, but we still seem to capture quite a decent number of satellite images. Now our average customer has about 3.3 measurements or satellite readings uh, per, um, no, 3.3 days per um, satellite reading. So that's um, half as, or, or or a rising plate meter or a CDAX or something else you'd use to manually measure, you'd get half as many. So it's quite exciting. Uh, so if I go back to the farm here, we can see we can see all the different things. So we, we can see the growth rate on this farm. We know that it starts plummeting around this time of year. So you can see weekly, we can see, oh, that's the pasture cover, sorry. Then we can come across here to the growth rate and see the growth rate is plummeting. Then if we come across down here to the leaf emergence, we can see how the leaf emergence is tracking. So we need to slow the rotation down. We can come up here and use a tool and we can use the leaf stage calculator or the nitrogen calculator or the area allocation calculator. So all of these tools, they go into helping you just make really good grazing decisions, whether it's subconsciously looking at the chart and just knowing that you need to slow your round down. If if that's if that's the subconscious thought that enters your head, you're winning. I know you might think, yes, I already know that the leaf emergence is slowing and we're going into winter, or I know that the growth rate is about to start climbing as we're going into spring. The thing, the difference between having the numbers there in front of you, staring back at you, is that it subconsciously sinks in and it relieves your brain pressure. So you don't have to put as much energy into thinking about what's happening. You just automatically switch over into the best pasture grazing management person you can be. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this presentation and feedback is always welcome. And I look forward to meeting you one day.